have to destroy the riparian buffer to save it. <laughs> Ever since I got, at William, got to William & Mary last year, uh, Greg and I have been trying to understand um, how nutrients and sediments get into the Chesapeake Bay. And our hypothesis is that riparian buffer is failing somehow, um, again, because the evidence being that a lot of the sediments and nitrogen and phosphorus that are getting into Chesapeake are coming from farmed lands. So we can sample groundwater from the field down to the stream. It's called a total station because it, it measures both the angles, both the compass direction and the angle with respect to vertical. These riparian buffers are designed to trap sediment that leaves the field, which often is carrying with it nutrients and other pollutants that are potentially delivered to streams and then carried out to the Chesapeake Bay in this case. For many years, the state of Virginia has used a riparian buffer thickness of 100 feet, and it's not a particularly magical number. All right, I think we're ready to survey. All right. So our project is really geared towards trying to investigate, are these buffers, these riparian buffers, thick enough? Are they effective enough? at, at uh, trapping sediment and nutrients. Answering that question is important to thinking about why isn't the Chesapeake Bay effectively getting better. Is that pretty good, Greg? I'm set. One of the ways by which we're testing this is, is a relatively novel technique using radioactive fallout, um, radioactive cesium, which was deposited on the right. farm, um, and in the riparian forest, pretty much everywhere in Virginia during the 1950s and the 1960s when we were testing atmospheric weapons. Yeah, we want to go to the, edge, the very edge. So but we're geologists and we think on time scales of, right well, for, it, sometimes we think on time scales of billions of years, but for this project, we're, we're thinking on time scales of decades to centuries. We couldn't do it without the students. We're looking at the, um kind of quantities of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment that build up in the riparian buffer. Um, and kind of ideally, if they're doing their job, you should see elevated levels of all of those things kind of right near the farm field, but then it should drop down again to some sort of base level by the time you get to the stream. Each, each of these flags were where we had the points A and B for sampling, so we're looking at the lateral variation of sediment and nutrients. At the end of the day, farming is one of the largest environmental impacts that anyone has. And this summer we were here Probably like a month doing ago, so yeah doing all of our sampling in June. June. Yeah. Spider bites, Spider bites tick ticks, bites, ticks, lots mosquitoes. Of, lots and lots of ticks, mosquitoes. <laughs> We've had great connections with our professors and also just I mean I think it, it is a very unique experience to be able to be be doing like research that's not like graduate level but we get hands-on experience with all the equipment. Those undergrads that. don't do Research. Research, right? You, yeah. you know more about that. Most, yeah. most undergraduate geologists, geology majors don't do this. Yes. Greg and I pitched this proposal to the Virginia Environmental Endowment, and um, they they funded the project for yeah, two so years. It's going to take take this too, put it down into the into the well. We both have this interest in in uh, attempting to evaluate human strategies for, for preventing soil water pollution. And so what we bring is, is the ability to go out into the landscape and actually make measurements and observations that tell us something about whether or not these engineering strategies actually are working in practice. If we want to start with one, then one will be up there. This will be two, three, four. Syringe up. It is, it is an inter, quite an interdisciplinary project in that uh, we have biology that's involved, the environmental science and policy program is involved. There's a social part to this, there's a scientific part to this, and, and the only way, there's a political part to this too, and the problem and the only way that you can move forward is to use these different approaches. We can find whatever it is we're going to find, but if we don't find a way to convey that information to policymakers, then it, it, it's all for naught. It's not too sediment laden, so I think we'll be okay. It's 152.3. In the geology department, we try to work on problems that are pertinent to society. You know, we study the earth, and, and that's how, how we operate, is we try to understand how we can be better stewards of the earth. And we may find some interesting things in a year or two, but I have a feeling we're just going to open up a few new cans of worms here and there. <laughs>